what we all should have in mind. Let's not think of a magic bullet in form of anyone who will come. Give the person president, Nigeria will be good. Nepal will take light. Roads will be fine. Schools won't go on strike. What are you doing to make sure that those do not happen again in the country? That's the question. And the Americans would say, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Shock most people, basically. And the question with us, are you still a member of SDP or the APC? I'm no longer a member of the SDP. I did write a resignation letter to the party before joining the APC. So I'm no longer a member of the Social Democratic Party. It's a very painful experience because I didn't set out with the um, intention to ever leave that party because of the ideology that it is founded upon and the history of the party in my family. Unfortunately, events that happened in the party um, took the nostalgia out of my hands and compelled me to make this very difficult decision. You inspire, you, you aspired for the presidential ticket mm. of uh, this former party SDP. Yes. Tell us your experience particularly as a female contestant. Um, well, to start with, I aspired on the platform of the SDP, but for the presidency in Nigeria. So it wasn't supposed to be an SDP president because um, once one becomes a president, one becomes a president for the entire nation. Now the question is, what was my experience? Hmm. You know, the different days came with different experiences because the life of an aspirant has diverse challenges, has diverse ups and downs, and those determine on a daily basis how you get to feel as an aspirant. Um, sometimes I was in spaces where people were very excited and thrilled, you know, that, ha, ah, woman, you try, you, you get courage, you know, that kind of thing. So that would make me feel good, of course. And so people would go, ah, and you are baggy. And you know, these baggy people that are shy, they like to stay in their village, they don't like city life. Oh, which kind of baggy you be? Where do you, your own kind of baggy come from? You know, so those were nice moments. Um, when my family finally, everyone came on board and understood that yes, I could actually um, aspire to be the president of Nigeria. Um, those were nice moments. But there were moments where people would look at me and laugh hysterically and say, you really think you can be the president of this country? You know, those were not very pleasant moments. And I remember sometimes I met women, and in fact, even recently, who would tell me, ah, we know you just did it for your CV. Ah, we know uh, you knew you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't get it anywhere. You know, I get offended by those kind of comments, you know. Powder. Like a pull down oh yeah, boom. I, I, I just get very upset when people tell me that. I couldn't have woken up in my life knowing that I am embarking on a failed project and I would give it my all. In fact, my all. That would never be my kind of lifestyle. That would never be my kind of choice. I put everybody out on the spotlight. My entire family was on the spotlight. My kids were on the spotlight. And some of them got bullied as a result. They took everything for my sake. I wouldn't put them in that light. For what? A failed project. And so I got very offended when that happened. And then there were times that people looked at me and they said, you know that Nigeria is not ready. We can't make a woman a president yet. You know, and those were a bit like this is 21st century. The fact that I can aspire means that I can be. Wow, that's bold. Wow, come on. You stepped down from Prince Adewoli Adibayo. Mm. Looking back, do you think the party made the right choice? Well, let's start with me, you know, uh, taking responsibility um, and putting it in the right context. 
the things that happen in the party are so nuanced in such a way that you can't really hold anybody like responsible as party to the negotiations that happen like things happen behind and there are like uh, people who are holding the strings you know to control the marionettes you know kind of thing so that's why let me start with me do i think i made the right decision to step down for adewale um somebody said at the time you made the decision it is the right decision you make sometimes you can make the right decision and down the line the decision may not come up with good outputs but it doesn't mean the decision was wrong it just means that the outputs weren't good because there are too many things that interplay um i was told that the ticket was zoned to the south and i understood that perfectly because i had been in the people's uh, democratic party and uh, i know that sometimes you need to sacrifice for the well-being and the health of your party if you want your party to be strong enough especially when you are in the opposition or when you are a you know um, growing party like the sdp was you know were just like coming back onto the scene to be that alternative force that could take power in nigeria so it was a responsibility on me as an elder, as a stakeholder in the party, not to predispose the party to anything that will make it weak. I was willing to sacrifice everything to preserve the integrity of the party so that the party could stand a good chance, you know. So I think I would still make that kind of decision because I did love my party. I was very loyal to my party. Um, was the party right to zone it to the south? I would say yes, because, I mean, North has kept power, and we always talk about power shift. And all we had in that party was me, the northerner, who was an aspirant. Everyone else came from the southwest. So what choice else was there? If it was zoning to the south, then it was going to be southwest, because those were the only other aspirants uh, that we had. Um, <clears throat> I think that... I would say yes, but with reservation, because the party had a single opportunity of having someone like me as higher on their platform. My CV speaks for itself. My capacity speaks for itself. We've never had a female president in the country. What was wrong with seizing the opportunity? That is someone who has the grace of God upon their life. That is someone who God has imbued charm and charisma and knowledge, competence, courage. Why on earth would anyone throw away that opportunity for the reason of geographical, um, what do they call it, uh, quota system? You know, I mean, Mary should have spoken in that instance. And so that's, you know, balancing it all out. If they had insisted that I run to the end and I got the flag, they would still have been in right standing because I'm a woman and we could zone it to a woman this time around, couldn't we? Well, <laughs> you're now with the APC. Yes, I am. Tell Nigeria the difference in human relations style between Mola and Metino and the Hmm. Honestly speaking, when I got to the APC, I was very, very surprised at who I met because the humility is something else. When you come into physical contact with Ahmed Tunibu, he is a very, very humble person. And when you are with him, he doesn't have any airs. So you don't feel the need to be on the defensive. He makes everybody around him feel relaxed and welcoming. You know, it is not a question, uh, who is this person you brought to me? No, because, I mean, he's been all over. He is such an icon. And if he 
decides to do some little yaga, you know, it will be permitted. But he is not that sort of person. He is a very hard-working man. He pays attention to details. And he doesn't take human relations for granted. As soon as he saw me in company of people with whom he has worked over the years, he knew. And he said it by himself. He said, no, 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 no. I don't need to interview her. I know you won't bring rubbish to me. So I welcome her into the fold, give her a position on the stakeholders platform, and find a committee for her to head. And he did that immediately. Why? Because he recognizes the contribution that people in his team have made for him. He is not thinking about the fact that he's the boss. And so if he, there is no sense of entitlement. And that is the difference between him and Adewale. I perceive that Adewale feels a sense of entitlement. He feels like people do owe him something, some loyalty, some explanation, some some thing, you know. And then uh, the tendency to make people be on the defensive, like, um, you know, I kept getting the feeling that he has the impression that he is the most righteous person, that he has the most high integrity, and that uh, most people around him, if not all, are rogues. You know, that is not the right way to deal with people. You can't just by seeing people, or even if they have, I don't know what, done that then one would conclude that everybody around me here is a rogue. These persons around me are potential um, grabbers, you know, they just want to hang around me for my resources or something like that. I didn't get that, I haven't till now, felt that from Tinibu's side. And um, for me, that is huge. I have also noticed the kind of liberty in terms of allocation of roles and responsibilities. When it comes to uh, Asiwaju, uh, Tinibu, he is very ready to relinquish authority, you know, and uh, power to people to play in the team. And everyone counts on his team. And that's very amazing. There is no looking down on who is just coming on board, no. There is no looking down on, oh, you can only speak, but you cannot mobilize, no. He understands that the body has different parts. For as long as every part is able to deliver on its functions, he is cool with it, you know. And uh, we can see that it is working well for him because what he is enjoying all through the campaign is the human relations that he has, you know, um, nurtured along the years. And he has my respect for that. Um, there's this analysis speculated mm. that Bola Ahmed Tinubu's chances of becoming the president mm. is actually eroded mm. or is dear. Mm. What's your analysis having the four front runners, so mm. to speak? In what would erode Tinubu's chances? What on earth would erode it? I don't see any erosion or any elements and factors eroding it. I know that people have run their mouth for, of course. I mean, people keep talking about the Muslim Muslim ticket. You know, for example, I think that is the biggest uh, issue people, some people are having with the uh, um, candidacy. I don't have those fears at all because, and I don't think anyone should, I am looking at capacity, I am looking at competence, I am looking at experience, I'm looking at wisdom, I'm looking at the capacity to plan way ahead of time. I am, that's the capacity to foresee and, and, and do projects that, in fact, 20 years, you are reviewing and you are still seeing that you are on track. You know, you don't need to change much. You know, I, I, I see in him someone who doesn't break down under pressure scrutiny, bullying, whatever. Once he has a target, he just keeps his focus on it. If reading social media is going to affect what he is doing, he decides that I don't go to all those your Facebook because they are abusing me, they, they are insulting me there and I don't want to get angry. You know, that's amazing. And I see in him, you know, someone who is all welcoming. 
the diversity around his persona is amazing. And I have seen people who have been impacted by him who are giving testimonies of what you know he's, that he's done to their lives. And they come from all sorts of corners of the country, of all ages, and his team is the same thing. And uh, that is why I would be on board his team. He has the capacity to interconnect issues and to know that if we solve this problem, it would solve 10 others, you know. He wants to do the work by addressing the matter from the roots and then coming up. That's the kind of person that I have seen. And that's why I think his chances can be eroded by whatever thing else people are talking about. You know, is it health? People were running their mouth and thinking that this man, he may fall down and die or during campaign. How many people have died since Tinubu started campaigning? The guy is waxing stronger. Abi, you know, see? Me, I see you. So I don't think that anything is eroding. Is it the change of this naira that people are blaming on the APC party? You know, there is something about God. If you have sincerity of purpose, even when people intend evil for you, he converts it to good. This has ended up like a campaign for the team of uh, Tinubu because people are beginning to say, eh, he's not part of the people that are doing this Niger. And he came out early to, to condemn not the policy and allow people to listen carefully. He never condemned the policy. What he said was that the strategy and the time frame is what he's having problems with. Not because of him. I'm sure Tinibu hasn't killed in any ATM machine. He hasn't gone to the bank and had to fight, you know. No, he is thinking about you and me and what is wrong with that. He's going to be a leader. He is a father. He's always been. So it's natural and normal for him to see and feel for us. That is a responsible parent. That is a responsible leader. And people are trying to, oh, it's because they are, now they, they have interest. That's why they, hello, tell me, in the whole of this universe, is there anything you do that is not driven and governed by your interest? So why should we kill someone else? Because they have interest. We continue to have interest for as long as we are operating on this planet. You have been the voice for the women, mm. folk, and the girl child. Mm -hmm. What would be your word towards aspiring for good careers, positions, politics, leadership positions? What would be your word inspiration? Ah, uh, well, I mean, it's not going to work without women. And we should know that because uh, there is a reason for which we are all here. We are all embedded with potential, with abilities, with gifts. And those gifts and capabilities and potentials are not for us. They are for people around us. They are for the world. And so everyone needs an equal playing level field to bring on board what they have in them, that the society might be a better place. And it's most especially so for women who constitute 50% of the population. If you were going to spend the whole day, my brother Mohammed, doing something with only your hand, even if it is, I think you are right-handed, even if it is just the right hand that you are supposed to be operating with a day, and only one leg, and only one eye, and only one ear, in the evening you will tell me how life was. But that is how we'll be running our lives when we marginalize women's participation. We are saying that half of our body can operate on its own. Hey, we are wrong. We need everybody to come on board. And that is the only way we can have sustainable development. Women need to be uh, brought on board. And I am foreseeing the fact that uh, there is a very strong parallel women campaign team ongoing now for Tinibu that uh, at the end, when he does pick the ticket, women representation is going to be something that I'm really looking forward to because it's going to be strong. Well, the any mention of people or persons mm. that you hold there in SDP that you've left? Mm. People I hold dear. Yes, ma My big brother! <laughs> the chairman of the Social Democratic Party. He's been an awesome person. You know, when I left the party, I didn't live there without a pain. Chances are that I go the week away, you know. Let's do it all in the open. Let's cut it and then we can fix it later kind of way of doing it. 
But when I thought on the other hand about the sleepless nights, the amount of investment, you know, all round investment that Mr. Gaban has made for the party, how he so coveted to bring on board the party people who have the potential to deliver on its ideologies. I just cool down. I can't wound this party. He's doing everything to hold the structure together to ensure that they emerge with something from the 2023 election. It would not be me who would go and scatter it. I love Mr. Gaban. He means well for the party. Any last word as Nigerians prepare for the coming election in a few days? Mm. What are your words of advice to all stakeholders? Uh, you know, it's going to be two and a half or one and a half words. So one word is that we have our voters cards. You know, I have given that uh, analogy of, you know, we are giving birth to this new Nigeria. This new Nigeria will be delivered only if we have a supportive atmosphere for the chief um, care provider who is going to receive the delivery, who is birthing Nigeria. So we all have a stake at this new Nigeria that we are delivering. And that's why I like Bola Metinibu's outing. There was a point where he was interviewed, and he's the only one I've had saying it so far. He says that we need to work on our mentality. We need a change of mentality, of mindset. It was mindset that he used, uh, you know, to be precise. So uh, we all have to work on our mindset. If Nigerians remain the way we are, even if you bring Angel Gabriel, to govern Nigeria, we are not going to go anywhere because the POS man will be doing you. The neighbor man will be doing you. Police on the road will do his own. Everywhere you go, somebody is just ready to take advantage of the other person. You know, so there is need for mindset and I'm expecting that that is what we are carrying forward to this election. Let us not believe that there is one Messiah who will come and fix it. Let us think about someone who believes in teamwork. And these people are few. And we've seen them during this election. These are the people that everybody has come out to say, I did this with him. And this is what happened. You know, that's why I like the Bola Ametinibu ticket. It shows us team spirit, teamwork. So when you are going to do the election, vote for someone who will give you space so that you can contribute your own quota to the development of Nigeria after election. And that brings me to that half point. You know, we have to think about post-elections. It doesn't start and end at election. It goes beyond that. Have you seen a role for yourself after the election? And exactly what is it? I have seen my role. And I will continue to push hard to occupy my space. Because I need that space to contribute my quota. And that is why I have chosen Bola Ametinibu. Because I know that he believes in teamwork and i really want someone who believes in my capacity in the things that i can do so that i can bring on board my own contribution to make nigeria greater and that is what we all should have in mind let's not think of a magic bullet in form of anyone who will come give the person president nigeria will be good nepal will take light roads will be fine schools won't go on strike what are you doing to make sure that those do not happen again in the country? That's the question. And the Americans would say, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So on that last note, we'll be asking straight question. Who will be Nigeria's president come Saturday? Why are you asking me? You already know. <laughs> Bola Ahmed Tinibu is going to be Nigeria's president. And I don't want to end it without mentioning his wife, Remy. She's a sister indeed. And I pray for her every day because there are women who are put in specific positions for times such as this. Who knows? No. 